Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another one of my Mythic Mobs tutorials. Today we are going to be covering the much requested random spawn feature. So this is uh this is gonna be probably my lengthiest tutorial yet, as there is so much to do in this. Um make sure to check the YouTube playback bar as I'm gonna try and section this off the best that I can. I uh there's with so much to cover, you know, the I'm gonna try to at least make it convenient for you guys. So with this, I'm going to be covering pretty much obviously how to do it, um, what everything means, and the uh, do's and don'ts of using it, because all the features require very specific and very different setups, so it's going to be very important to know which uses which. So, if you haven't already, hop on down over into my Discord channel, link will be in the description below as always. Lots of help going on there, lots of community. Lots of good content, lots of good times. So, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in there because that is what my community is for. So, th without further ado, let's go ahead and get on into it. So, first, my first pointer I want to give you guys, um, unless you're doing something very specific, like biome-based, do not use a custom world like I am in right now. Because... Well, there's an issue with world generators that if I fly around, if you look where it says biome above my uh, sounds, local difficulty, debug, etc. As I fly around, you see the biome changing pretty much constantly. And that's going to make biome based mobs a real absolute pain and they're probably not even going to work. So if you guys are using a custom world generator do not use biome based mobs as it probably will not work um that's just my first pointer to give you of course this is going to be different if you know somebody who's really good with like mc edit or world painter because at that point you can literally paint the biome um you can tell minecraft what biome to load it as and you'll be all right but with world generators like this there's generally about three biomes per actual biome so yeah, don't use a world generator if you plan on using biome-based mob spawning. You will not have a good time. That is a promise. So let's go ahead and get down into it before we get into specific stuff like that. So the first thing we need to do, we're going to take a look at our example random spawns.yml. To find this, you're just going to go into your mythic mobs folder, random spawns, and it's going to be right there. Now, as you can see, I already added a note here for anybody who um, pretty much wants to know how the numerical values work. So before we actually get too far into it, let's go ahead and just break down what we have here already. This will be in everybody's file as it is one of the default files that the developers included with the plugin for our reference, thankfully, because this is very important and I probably wouldn't remember it all. So the first thing we're going to do, you need to have a section title. So here it's random skeleton king because they have it set to only spawn the skeleton king. Um, so with mob type, that's pretty much what it is. You can list multiple mobs. Say we were to do, let's do a third section and we're going to rename it. We're going to do um, skeleton kingdom, I guess. It doesn't matter what you name this, this is literally just the spawn table title. Uh, this isn't anything super important, but it does have to work like you usually set up other mob files though. So here we're going to do mob type, and we're going to actually combine these two. This is how you get several mobs within the same spawn table. So we're going to do skeleton king, we're going to put a comma, and then we're going to do skeletal knight. So now they will both be within the spawn table and we can go ahead and just comment this out if you want to. Um, you don't have to, of course. So now we need to specify worlds. What's important about worlds? Well, by default, whenever you go into Minecraft, each your first world that you start in is literally just called world. This can be changed in the spigot.yml before you generate a new world, or if you're using multiverse. However, by default, that is always what it will be called. So if you do have multiverse, which I highly recommend because otherwise this, uh, this part of the plugin may not be as useful to you, 
we're gonna type in mv info and see world name world. It's literally just world. Um, so another pointer I want to give to you guys, and I'll bring this back up later in the tutorial too, is this is another reason why biome-based spawning is going to be very important and why you don't want to use a custom world generator. Because right now, as you can see, a skeletal knight just spawned in the water as like, it either replaced a fish or a squid or even a dolphin, who knows. But why, why would it be there? Wouldn't it make sense for it to spawn on land because it's a land, you know, land mob? Yeah, but that's not how random spawns work. You have to define that, otherwise they will just replace literally anything at all. So what we're going to do, or actually we're not going to do anything about that yet, but I just want you guys to keep that in mind. Do not do biome based spawns unless you don't use a world generator. And uh, if you do, make sure to specify which ones not to use. Like for example, so. Um, anyway, so we're gonna go back to this world world because that's what world we're in Now the chance here. This is what I had the notes on above 1.0 means it is going to be 100% chance. It is literally anywhere from 0, 0.0 All the way up to 1.0. That's your entire range right there. So make sure to keep that in mind um, If you need to make a note of it if not, just, you know, if you're familiar with this, then 1.0 is your absolute highest value. So what we're going to do, we're going to do 1.0 just for now, and I'll be able to show you guys how that works. Now we're not, uh, the only other thing we really truly need to add is the action. There are two actions that I'm aware of. There's the replace action, and there is the add action. We're not going to worry about add yet because that's going to require other setup that we will do later in this tutorial. But we're going to do replace for now, and we're going to go ahead and save. Next we're going to reload, and you're going to want to type the butcher command, so slash butcher at a, or whatever your equivalent is. For essentials, that's what it is. And as you can see, holy skeletons galore. They are absolutely everywhere, and it looks kind of goofy for them being in water too, doesn't it? So, we're gonna we're gonna go on the land. One thing to keep in mind is this will replace any animals as well, so be very careful with using replace. Um, and also that's why you don't use it generally at 100%, although you can. That's entirely up to you. But if you do, you will never have cows, sheep, you know, chickens, anything like that at any given point. Um, so since we use butchers, animals don't generally spawn unless you fly to a new chunk. So yeah, see, and but like water animals spawn all the time, so that's why you see a ton of them in water, but if we were to find any land animals, they would be just, those skeletons would be all over the place. So what we're gonna do, because this is probably about to overload me really quickly just showing you guys, um, we're actually just going to comment this out until we add more to it real quick. We're going to reload and we're going to do mm -M kill all. So that, yeah, as you can tell that killed a lot of mobs. Hey look I found my old platform, what do you know? <laughs> With one of my NPCs. So as you can see, like I said, the water based mobs, they spawn really frequently. So um, it's going to be very important later to specify where you do not want your mobs spawning at. Next we are going to we're going to uncomment this now and we're going to change this to 0 0.1 i suppose uh i want you guys to be careful because even though 0 0.1 is only 10 percent chance even if i did 0 0.01 there would still be a high chance of these guys spawning and with it becoming nighttime this is actually a good time for me to show you guys that when normal mobs start to spawn those skeletal guys will be literally everywhere. So 1.0, save, reload. So as we fly around, that's, that spider was already there, that doesn't count. As we fly around, <laughs> all right, hold on, let me survival here and then fly. Okay. There we go. 
now they're starting to spawn. It's been a little finicky, but you can see that it's working now. As you can see, every mob that's starting to spawn is going to be one of those other guys. So, very, uh, you know, very important to keep in mind. It's a little weird. Usually spawning is way more than this. It might also be because I'm, be because I'm on easy mode. So if I do MV set diff MV heck, <laughs> this isn't even what the tutorial is on. MVM set difficulty harder. Okay, theoretically we'll see more mobs. Yep, yep, see there they are, they're already spawning on me. Okay, so, that's how you can see that, you know, all the mobs that are spawning are always going to be those two types that we specified. And you can always add more to it. I'm not sure why the spawning seems to be incrementally low, but that's, uh, that's for me to figure out in a different thing. So, that's how you will get that to work. As you can see, they are replacing all your water-based mobs. So that's definitely something we need to watch out for. We're gonna set the chance down to 0.1, even though that's still pretty high, you know. Um, I'll show you guys why. So, next we need to, we actually need to set our conditions. Priority isn't exactly necessary unless you have multiple spawn tables working together. Uh, if you only have one for whatever reason, uh, you're not going to need to set priority. Although I, you know, it's a good habit to be in just in case. But I'm not, I'm not going to do it yet until we make another one. So we're going to add conditions. We're going to do biome b equals ocean false, and you can add as many um, as many conditions as you want. Like we can do ocean beach, uh, so on and so forth. We can do like, you know, night, true, yada yada. Um, so that's how we would get that to work. And if we go in and reload, I'm gonna actually set this back to 1.0 until I am done with these examples. So we're gonna reload, Organa, MMM, kill all. And theoretically, well, <laughs> yeah, like I said, I'm gonna have issues with, uh, um, biomes and such so deep ocean so b equals deep ocean deep ocean equals false okay so if we reload i might be using the condition wrong to be honest with you guys i don't remember nope there we go so as you can see land mobs are taking the ground now and they are everywhere so, because they cannot spawn in water anymore, or at least in deep oceans, they need somewhere else to spawn. And now, they are absolutely everywhere. That's how you keep mobs out of water. You can also do, like, in-block, um, I think, in-block, water, or, I think it's like block equals water false. Let me... I'm going to pull open the manual and we're going to look at this together. So, let's see. Here we go. So we're going to go into conditions. We're going to look for block. Block type, no. Okay, here it is, in block. So, in block. Let me fix this. That's what's showing in the thing. In block, yep. B equals water, false. So theoretically, if we just remove the biome one, they still shouldn't spawn in the water, but it was kind of buggy for a while. I don't know if it got fixed, as I have not tested this in a couple years, to be honest with you. So we're gonna reload. MMM kill all. Okay. So it seems like it's still working. Thankfully, it's not a problem anymore, because it used to be like, stationary water, water, flowing water, uh, water level this, water level that, and it was so complicated, but I guess just water works now. Thank God, because, uh, <laughs> that was such a pain to mess with, I promise. So, uh, yeah, that's how you keep certain mobs from spawning out of oceans. Like, since these are all water-based mobs, you know, it doesn't make sense for them to be spawning in the oceans. Let me make sure I've got God mode on. Okay, I do. I do. Good. 
So that's how you're going to set up the random spawns. That's how they work with the replace action. But I still have to show you guys priority. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to do Animal Kingdom. Mob type, we'll get back to that real quick. Worlds. World. Chance. We're going to we're going to set this to 1.0 also. Action is going to stay replace. We're not going to bother or No, we're just going to copy this condition here. Cuz I don't want any of them spawning in the ocean regardless. Okay, so we're going to go and save, but we're not going to reload yet because we need to set up mobs for the animal kingdom now. So we're going to go into our mobs folder. And we're going to make a new file. I set one up on my last test here. I pretty much only set up a mush or mushroom mob. Um, don't use vanilla names that will cause it to act kind of wonky. Um, at least in the mob file, don't use vanilla names. I Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, don't use vanilla names in the mob files. So now that we have mushroom mob, we're going to do another. We're going to do a couple. I'm just going to... Um, I guess chicken mob plus, <laughs> oops, chicken mob, wait, actually, wait, this is the type, don't type that, don't type that, chicken, um, and we're going to do one more, we're going to do, what are we going to do, we're going to do sheep, why not, we're going to keep it simple, sheep mob, and then sheep, okay, so, now we have our mob type set up for our second spawn. So we're going to do sheep mob, comma, mushroom mob, comma, chicken mob. Okay. So now we got all those added. As you can see, there's nothing special about them. They're literally just base mobs. Um, now we're going to play around with priority. So I believe the higher the priority number, the more it will take, well, <laughs> priority. So if we add priority one here, copy that, put it down here and do priority two, theoretically, these guys will never spawn because we have this at a 100% chance. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do reload. We're gonna go ahead and kill off uh, all the mobs that are already spawned in, MMM kill all. Okay, uh, we're gonna make it nighttime again, just to kind of see. Yeah, so see, there's mushrooms, chickens, sheep, a lot of wildlife spawning um, in place of where normal mobs would be. That can make for a pretty cool feature. However, you know, of course, you want to be careful because uh, <laughs> that's a lot of animals. So what we're gonna do is we're going to we're going to replace the priorities here. Actually, no we're not. We're going to leave this at priority 2, but we're going to set this to 10%. Now, how do we know this is going what well, like what's what's going on here? It's there's just so many numbers. What actually means it, you know, what what's happening? So, since this only even though this has a priority of 2, it only has a 10% chance to happen. So that means there's a 90% chance it will not, and when that's the case, this will be our fallback. Now, if this were also set to 10%, that means if this one failed to spawn an animal, and this one failed to spawn our custom mobs, that means vanilla mobs would spawn in their place. So let me demonstrate here. We're going to reload. We're going to butcher at A, or minus A. And now if we fly around... As you can see, there's kind of a mix of different mobs going on. We've got our vanillas, we've got our customs, um, and we, as we fly around a little bit, we might be lucky. Yeah, there's like some some of our animals spawning there. It's a that's a good way to mix it. Of course, you want to play around with the numbers, but basically, with your priority, you have a hierarchy. So like, it's pretty much going to go two or whatever, whatever your highest number is. I'm gonna do highest number. Let me comment this out so it doesn't screw up the file. Highest number. Um, next highest. And then if you assume that none of them are 
um, set to like 100%, like how these are both set to 10%, you'll have highest priority. Let me let me switch number to priority highest. Priority. Next highest priority. Um, I'm gonna do a thing here too. So like two, one, and then after that, you are just gonna you're just gonna have default mobs. So this is pretty much how the hierarchy works. Now this is assuming you don't use a 1.0 uh, chance. But if you want to get rid of absolutely every vanilla mob and you just want your custom ones to take the place, um, you're going to make sure, you're going to add your fallback. So Skeleton Kingdom would be our 100% chance. So if we set this to like 30, if the 70% chance comes into play where these don't spawn, then our custom mobs will always spawn and we will never have vanilla mobs in our world. So if we reload, uh, butcher, minus A, uh, that won't kill mythic mobs. Make sure you do MMM, kill all with it in conjunction. So now, as you can see, since it's only a 30% chance, there are some animals spawning here and there, but it's primarily our custom mobs. But as you can see, there is no vanilla mob in sight, not a single one. So that's how you get rid of vanilla mobs and have your fallback. What you can do too is um, you can use like armor stands to summon groups of mobs if you want to like kind of give it more of a specific type. I'm not going to go and do this in this tutorial because this tutorial is already going to be pretty lengthy as is. But um, yeah, so as you can see too, I believe water mobs will still Theoretically, yeah, they'll still spawn regularly since we have in water set to false. So that won't mess with oceans, which is pretty nice, unless, of course, you do not have that condition specified. If you did, then all of our water based mobs would also be skeleton kings and skeleton knights. So that's how we use the replace action. Next, let's talk about the add action. This one is going to get kind of specific. So I'm actually going to go into a new world. So if you want to bear with me for just a moment, I am going to use multiverse and I'm going to create a new world. So we're going to call this, uh, we're just going to call this test world just for convenience sake, normal minus T flat. So if any of you are familiar with super flat worlds, you know that mobs spawn literally absolutely everywhere. So let's go ahead and teleport over. If you guys don't have this, if you don't have multiverse, you can still work it from any other um, any other thing. However, I highly don't recommend it to do it that way. Uh, so what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do MV, uh, let's see, MV modify, I think it's a game rule. It's been a while since I've used this plugin. MVM set game rule. MV game rule. <laughs> Holy crap. There we go. Okay, so it's just MV rule. Got it. So what we're going to want to do, if you're using the add function, you're going to want to turn off mob spawning. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. But for now, just go ahead and do that in your settings. If you're using multiverse, you can do it how I am on screen. Um, if not, then I believe there is a file or a setting in your server properties or your uh, spigot or bucket file. It's somewhere in there that allows you to disable mob spawning. But we do not want to set it to peaceful. Keep that in mind, we are specifically using game rules. We are not using difficulties. So we're going to do MV rule, do mob spawning false. So now if we butcher them all, they're not going to spawn anymore. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set, we're gonna make, um, we're gonna make a new section, Animal Kingdom 2. We're actually, you know what, we're just gonna copy this and we're gonna modify it. So go ahead and copy the Animal Kingdom one. Uh, give it a new name because you don't want them to override. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna change world to test world because that's what we called this new super flat world we're in. If you can't remember what you called your world, you can type slash mv info 
and it'll tell you world name and world alias. So now that we know that's the case, we are gonna set this, we're gonna set this really low because I remember what happened. So we're gonna do like 0 0.00001, uh, priority one, add, uh, we're gonna keep the condition there, that's fine. So, now that we know that's the case, we're actually not done yet because even if I reload right now, nothing will really happen. You see, we're in survival, we're flying around, but nothing's happening. And I know I set it really low, but even if I set it to like 0 0.1, you know, it's gonna... Nothing's happening. Where are our mobs at? Well, there's a setting in the Mythic Mobs config that we actually have to go enable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our Mythic Mobs folder, we're gonna go back, and we're gonna see our config.yml. We're gonna go into that and we're gonna scroll down a little ways until we see this random spawning section. Now you can disable vanilla spawns, which is really nice. Um, I prefer using the multiverse method just because it's what I'm familiar with. Um, I've been doing that for years because for a while there was no disabled vanilla spawns, but realistically you can do it either way. But the one thing that stays the same with both is you need to have generate spawn points set to true. This basically overrides um, mythic mo or sorry, this overrides vanilla Minecraft's uh, spawn point feature by creating its own. As you can see, there's a few different options here that we need to keep in mind. Um, so max mobs per chunk. If you guys weren't aware, a chunk is 16 by 16. If you press F3 and G at the same time, you will see a chunk grid. This is outlining every chunk. So if we had this set to two, that means even though, even if we have a really, really high add, um, add number, add chance, there would only be allowed to be two spawns that, or two mobs that spawn within this chunk, and then two within this, and two within this, and so on and so forth. So that's what mobs per chunk means. Uh, you can increase it, although I highly don't recommend it because you can easily flood your server with mobs, and with too many entities, you can actually overload and crash your server relatively easy. So using the add function is very, very, uh, it's very touchy. So be very careful if you're using add instead of replace. For that reason, I'm gonna set this back down to 0 0.001 again, and I'm gonna save it before I forget. Next is spawn radius per player. This pretty much means that, um, you know, this is how far around the player a mob will spawn. So if I were to do like, um, let me go into creative here and I'm going to generate a thing. One, what's it set to? 64. So I believe that means mobs should spawn theoretically like 32 blocks any direction. So we're going to do uh, spin 32 set cobblestone okay so from me all the way to the end of that is where mobs will spawn and it'll work going um that way as well so let me do this for demo for visual sake so that far around me is how far mobs will spawn that's a 64 uh diameter right there but a radius i think still works the same now, per player Y, uh, you can adjust this if you want. That means I could be like way up here and mobs will still spawn. This can get kind of annoying, especially if you're in caves. Uh, I actually almost recommend setting this down to something more fitting, like 15. Um, if, you're, if you have mountain biomes that are like extreme mountains, then I, uh, you should definitely keep it at 32. But if you have a relatively smooth world, like my last world was just kind of hilly, but not mountainous, uh, mountainous, something like 16 would be fine. One thing you always generally want to keep true is despawn lazy random spawn mobs. What this means is any mobs that spawn but never aggro a player will eventually despawn when a chunk is unloaded. Um, 
Always keep that to true because that can save a lot of mobs if it's set to false. Again, resulting in uh, server overloading. But that's still your... That's up to you. Max generation time. This is in ticks, I do believe. So every tick, it's going to make new points. And here you can see points per section. Land, 5, air, 0. Lava, 0. Ground, 0. C. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what the difference between land and ground are. Um, I know land is obviously, like, where we're standing currently. I would assume ground means literally anywhere between land or caves below us or anything like that. I'm not sure, but it's there. But the other ones speak for themselves. Um, the C is going to be two points per second, and that's why we didn't get entirely overwhelmed with mobs when we were in the water. But, you know, that's... Um, yeah, so that's pretty much... For random spawning sake, that's pretty much all you need to know is just this section right here. Um, I, heck, I'd actually argue just this little part of the section. This part doesn't even matter as much. Of course, you can up this. However, if you do, um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of things that are just conflicting. So I personally don't mess with it. But now that we have generate spawn points set to true, we're going to save and we're going to reload. One thing you need to keep in mind, too, is this will not work if you are in creative mode. We need to be in survival for those spawn points to kick in because they are per player. So if we do that, I'm going to fly around a little bit. Um, I can see that nothing is spawning, which means I misconfigured something somewhere. So this is a good time to kind of keep an eye on what's going on. So generate spawn points is set to true. Um... Test world, priority one, and we're going to actually set the chance to 0 0.1. And we're going to reload. There we go. So, I guess the add function may have gotten fixed over the time, because before this would spawn an absolute ton of mobs, like... So much so that your server would overload. Let me go ahead and turn this off. Um, okay. So I guess you're safe to use 0 0.1, but the one thing you want to be careful about, though, is as mobs move around, other mobs will continue to just keep spawning as you go, um, eventually resulting in way too many mobs. Hence why uh, that one option, mobs per chunk, is pretty important. I would almost say you should set that to 1, even, but... That's um, that's your preference. It's just when you turn the grid on, you can see that there's a lot of possibility for mobs to spawn. So you definitely want to be careful with that. Uh, over there, it's starting to get a little crowded, as you can see. But um, so say we say we set this to 1.0. <laughs> I'm getting ready for my recording to crash and possibly my world from this, but we're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna reload. And yeah, as you can see, they are starting to spawn pretty frequently. Some of them even ignoring the uh, chunk options. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, very sensitive option if you use add instead of replace. But if you use add, I highly recommend just removing vanilla mobs in general or if you just wanted to say your world was just lacking in animals, you could do this. But I think add is generally better for custom worlds. Like, uh, like my server I'm working on, for example, is going to be custom painted world, and there's not really going to be much normal spawning going on, which means I'm going to need to use the add function. But there's, um, yeah, it's it's pretty sensitive, so be very careful with it. I'm going to go ahead and set this back down to 0 0.01. I'm going to reload. I'm gonna kill them all. As you can see, 447, that's a lot of mobs to kill off in this one world. Um, so just be very careful with it, play around with it. You know, um, it works exactly the same as replace as far as like chance and priority go. Um, and of course you can use conditions too. These work exactly the same as they do for skills. So if you guys like, if you're trying to get ideas of how you want to get this to work, just go into the Mythic Mobs manual and just go into the conditions page. 
And you can literally you can literally use all of these conditions. It doesn't even matter. Um, of course, some of them won't work because, like, most entity-based ones won't work for the sake of, well, you know, your entity hasn't even spawned in to begin with. So, most of those won't generally work. Mythic Mob Type does, but a lot of these other ones don't. The ones you're going to need to use uh, most often are going to be your location ones. Uh, you can see in the manual they have them marked between entity, meta, location, compare. Um, yeah. So, but with, uh, with world spawning, a majority of your condition types are going to be location based. Because that's pretty much going to be, you know, uh, it's going to, it's going to be what defines how you use spawning. So I hope I covered everything. I'm not sure if I did because this is such a huge, huge feature in Mythic Mobs. But if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask in my Discord channel. Again, link will be in the description below. Uh, I hope I answered any questions you may have had because that was pretty much all of it wrapped up as short as I possibly could in this lengthy video. So if you haven't already, again, hop into my Discord channel. Subscribe for more content as I'm going to be trying to push out more tutorials as often as I can. Um, keep an eye out. If you have any questions about random spawning, make sure to ask in my Mythic Mobs help channel because uh, there's probably people there who know more about it than I do, to be honest with you. I know a lot about it, but there's always more to learn, no matter who you are. So, without, um, without any more hesitation, thank you guys so much for watching, and I can't wait to see what you come up with in the future.